Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Crate sponsored by Gaper.io. Today we have Leandro Margulis from Unify ID. Leandro, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So give us a brief background about yourself before joining Unify ID. Cool, happy to do so. Well, in case you're wondering where my name and accent is from, I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, born and raised there. Um, but I, I've been in the United States for the last 18 years and the last 10 in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley, uh, based out of San Francisco. Uh, I'm an industrial assistant engineer with a computer science background, a Yale MBA. I worked at Deloitte Consulting for a while before and after business school. Uh, and then I work in different startups and tech companies, including my own, uh, in different stages of growth. Uh, and lately, uh, I've been working on setting up uh, small business units within larger companies, so true case of entrepreneurship, uh, so entrepreneurship within a larger company. Uh, and lately, I actually joined uh, Unify ID as their VP of Developer Relations, building the, the developer community around uh, their passive, continuous, implicit authentication APIs. Got it. So, you know, since you've been working with multiple startups and startup founders, so my next question would be, founders DNA is something I like to talk about, you know. And do you see any common pattern between all of these great founders or do you think one coast is better than the other? Uh, one coast in terms of the, the United States coast, you mean? Yeah. So this is what it uh, is. It's not that one coast is... It's not that one coast is better than the other, and I can also talk a little bit about the, the global ecosystem. I, I, I have ties to, to entrepreneurship in, in, in Latin America and other emerging markets as well. Um, in a way, I do think that there's a lot of commonalities between the founders, um, and uh, it's kind of funny, everybody sees them as uh, risk takers, and I agree with that, but they're usually very good at calculating risk, and they just see risk sometimes a little bit differently. Um, um, but yeah, there's a lot of commonalities in terms of uh, being able to see trends and look at opportunities in different ways than others, where other people see challenges and entrepreneurs see opportunities. In terms of one coast different than the other on one place different than the other, I do see uh, some, once again, some commonalities and, and some, some differences. I, I do still believe that the West Coast uh, tends to be a little bit more entrepreneur friendly uh, that said, there's a lot of places that are becoming more entrepreneur friendly uh, as well. Um, I, I do believe that if you're looking in terms of funding, uh, usually the funding rounds from uh, the West Coast, Bay Area, Silicon Valley tend to be, the terms tend to be more favorable towards the entrepreneur and the races in terms of the amount of money tends to be higher than if you look at the East Coast or Europe or, or Latin America. Uh, that could be good or could not be good. I mean, there is such a thing as raising too much money and then uh, people lose discipline and focus. Uh, so I do feel like sometimes uh, some of the companies coming from other places uh, have the advantage of uh, frugality and discipline that sometimes uh, you don't see in, in, in other startups. So every place has its pros and cons. Um, and I think you... But I, and it's also even if you end up coming to the West Coast, it's always good to have uh, investors and your community where where your, your company is coming from uh, to be behind you, right? I mean, a lot of people when when they're looking to get a serious a Series A or Series B or Series C in 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 the Bay Area, uh, they come with angel investors or Series or seed or Series A investors from wherever the company is coming from, and then. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you come from certain markets in Europe or certain markets in Latin America, uh, the U.S. ends up being a larger market. So eventually they want to move to the U.S. And if you're going to move to the U.S., the Bay Area seems to be a good place to be in terms of the ecosystem that you have. Um, uh, but it's always good to have the support from your, from your local place of origin. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. You know, unfortunate times because of COVID and, you know, many businesses have felt the heat while, you know, it's acting as a catalyst for the others, you know. So how do you see the world evolving post COVID? You know, which industries do you see picking up compared to the others? Well, I think that COVID is going to come and go. It may take whatever time it takes until we get the right treatments and the vaccine. But a lot of the practice and habits that we're building through COVID are going to stay. Um, 
a lot of companies are suffering and a lot of companies are uh, are thriving i mean zoom we're having this conversation over zoom zoom is thriving uh, right so uh, and and i think a lot of the of working remotely and working from home uh, is going to be even more accepted than than it was before and that will have a big impact in a lot of different industries from real estate industry to retail industry to uh, what locations are more uh, coveted and so on and so forth i mean there's a lot of people uh, there, there's some jobs that require you to physically be in the bay area there's some other ones that you do not have necessarily to be here uh, and you can work from anywhere or uh, you may go to the office two to three days a week instead of five days a week so i i think a lot of the habits as i said that we're building during COVID, are here to stay um, and I think that technology has made this easier. Uh, of course, it, it always there's always issues, but I think like uh, we couldn't like, we couldn't have gone through this pandemic the way we're going if it wasn't for broadband, uh, right? Got it. Interesting. So true. So true. Um, now I'm just pausing my video because you know I'm getting some latency. I just want to want any disruption happening in the middle of the way. Technology, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, broadband is better, but it sometimes it's not the yeah. best, yeah? yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what advice are you giving to young startup founders who are looking to start in the middle of the pandemic? You know, because we've been hearing multiple stories that the VC funding is going to dry down, investors are rethinking their term sheets and everything. The startups are being forced to increase their runways, you know? What advice would you be giving to young founders should they go because the college is also a confusion these days and everything so what advice would you give to someone well depending on what stage you are but the couple, a couple comments here there's a, a a lot of the great companies have been founded in difficult times so i i i think that there's a lot of opportunities and this uh, this time should give us some time to do some introspection and, and looking at different opportunities around us right? because we sometimes we're always like running 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 right now we have a time to like look to each side and see the trends around us and we may be able to identify new opportunities that, that we haven't thought of before so uh, this is as good a time as any if not better in some sense uh, uh, to, to start a new venture uh, if you uh, were uh, already working on uh, on different things I, I i hope you were able to take certain measures to conserve your cash uh, in, in during the last uh, four to six months uh, and kind of brace for impact uh, if you were able to raise money that you raise enough so you can uh, so you can last and, and if you if you're earlier stage i think it's a great time to actually uh, pe people have more time to give you so if you um, like, basically you may have a great idea but you need to validate it and you need to iterate on it and you need to refine it so this may be the right time to reach out to people to refine your idea, get the feedback that you need, and make and make the connections that sometimes people are too busy to 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 talk right now. Everybody has more time because they are not wasting time in their commutes, um, and you know they may be, they may be more flexible to take a meeting. Um, so I encourage you to, uh, if you're a, an early stage founder with an idea, uh, to hone in on the idea, iterate, refine it, uh, and look at people that can help you move it forward. Got it, got it. Um, last question, uh, primarily around how to manage remote teams, sales, mental health, collaboration, creativity, any trip, tips around that? So the reality is, even before COVID, uh, we we have global teams that are working. Like I'm, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm used to working with teams in uh, Europe, Latin America, the U.S., and uh, you know we need to find ways to make uh, to make the conversations uh, work and kind of in a different way and not get anxiety when we, when you wake up in the morning and you have like eight to nine hour difference with the place and then your email is swamp and you just need to go through email. So. I think uh, like collaboration tools like like Slack and Microsoft Teams have really helped us in terms of having deferred conversations on specific topics and setting up the channels the right way. Um, I, I think that has been super helpful and has honestly reduced a ton of the emails back and forth. Uh, so I think that actually helps. Um, I, I do think that we need to build a sense of community and cadence and our own topics and, and give the chance for people to shine. So um, in, in, in that sense, I. Uh, you know, I, I think that we need to have the proper like, I, I, what I, 
what I built is circles of, of, of topics. I mean, sometimes you, you need very small teams to be able to talk about specific topics and make uh, decisions, but then when you need everybody to be in, in sync and align, you need periodic meetings if it's monthly or quarterly with a bigger team and uh, give the chance for, uh, for, for, for people to shine. And in terms of working remotely, I think like right now, it doesn't matter if somebody is two blocks away or 2,000 miles away, um, we still need to do the same things, right? So I think it's a great opportunity uh, to, to elevate people in, uh, to, to work remotely uh, from, from, from different places and be able to deliver uh, and, 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 and see less difference between somebody locally or remotely. Got it, got it. So, Leandro, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm sorry, we could have spoken for at least half an hour, but my team tells me I have to keep it within nine minutes. So I'm sorry about that, but Thank you so much for being on the show and take care of yourself and stay safe. Thank you so much.